Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Monday afternoon, October 24th. We're getting to the latter part of the month of October, and it's always kind of an interesting time of the year with the, the perhaps the, the end game of the tropical season coming in the next couple of weeks and then the transition to a colder and colder weather pattern for at least the eastern half of the U.S. And we want to talk about some of the players on the field right now as we go towards the end of the month of October into the early to middle part of November. Again, it's a potentially a very interesting time of the year with uh, perhaps a last gasp on the Atlantic Basin tropical season and then more and more uh, infiltrations of cold air masses from Canada into the central and eastern U.S. this time of the year. This is the way it looks right now. Uh, in the Atlantic Basin with respect to any tropical activity. There is a wave right here not far from Bermuda. Doesn't look all that impressive for any kind of a chance for it to affect the U.S. mainland. Looks like it may kind of meander around over the next few days and then kind of push on over cooler waters of the North Atlantic. Nothing showing up on the maps right here right now in the, uh, the, the uh, southern part of the Atlantic Basin, but GFS has certainly been sniffing something out over the next week or two, and we'll kind of talk about that as a possibility over the next couple of minutes here. Well, let's walk through some of the forecast model uh, maps from the Zero Z run of the GFS. This is the 850 millibar temperature anomalies. We're taking a broader view look here, North America as a whole. We have a lot of warmer than normal conditions right now across the north, uh, northern part, much of the uh, northeastern part of the nation, the southeastern part of Canada, colder than normal conditions out across the western U.S. Let's just push forward here and watch uh, some of the transition that takes place over the next week or two. This is now by the middle part of this week, and we see some cold air starting to show up way over here over Alaska, and the northeastern part of the Pacific Ocean remains colder than normal across much of the western U.S., uh, by the middle part of this week. Then we go into the latter part of the week and a lot of nor warmer than normal conditions show up across the southern part of Canada, the northern part of the U.S. This is now all the way out to Sunday of the upcoming week and we're looking at October 30th. Then we push forward here. A lot of this cold air uh, over Alaska here by the uh, end of the upcoming weekend into the early part of next week. We're looking now at next Monday, October 31st. A lot of this cold air will start to break off and head to the south and east. And we'll see this as we go farther and farther into time. First, we have a lot of warmer than normal air, and then the cold air mass really shows up. And again, we're looking way ahead here. This is kind of a, a speculative phase uh, at this point in time here. We're past 10 days out going into the latter part of next week, the first part of November. But look at this cold air outbreak here as depicted by the zero z run of the gfs all the way down into the southeastern states and uh, this is again by the early the first week of the month of november well let's see what takes place at the 500 millibar level again we're using the operational run of the gfs zero z last night high pressure ridging over uh, eastern canada as we begin this new work week here on monday october 24th a lot of uh, lower than normal heights here across the western U.S., the southwestern part of Canada. Let's quickly walk through this, and we have uh, main, uh, maintenance of this high-pressure ridging over eastern Canada as we get into midweek. A lot of lower than normal heights across the western part of Canada, the western part of the uh, U.S., and we'll keep moving forward here. And here we have a deep upper low low showing up over Alaska. By the end of this work, we were looking at this Friday, October 28th, when a very cold air mass pushes into Alaska, warmer than normal conditions, higher heights than normal across the northern U.S., uh, the southern part of Canada as we get into the upcoming weekend. And then uh, we noticed a moment ago on the 850 millibar temperature anomaly map, we had some colder air diving down into the south and east as we got into the first week of November. Here we are now, the middle of next week, and watch as this upper level low kind of spins south and east and just deepens quite impressively here by the end of next week. Again, this uh, was uh, associated with a cold cold air mass for this time of the year. Meanwhile, 
strong ridging popping up, popping up along the west coast of the U.S. and the western part of Canada. So uh, quite a uh, amplitudinal type of pattern by the time we get to the latter part of next week with strong upper level ridging out in the western part of the U.S., the western part of Canada, and a deep upper level trough over the eastern states. Well, let's now take a look at the surface forecast maps, and this time we'll point out some potential tropical activity that we'll want to uh, uh, monitor over the next week to two weeks. And again, this time of the year you often have a last gas type of tropical system or two, and that helps with the transition to a colder and colder weather pattern across the central and eastern U.S. Let's now quickly move forward here as we go through this week. Weak low pressure over the western part of the Atlantic uh, over the next few days. We have a strong storm system kind of weakens as it pulls out of the central U.S. into the Great Lakes region later this week. And here we go. We're starting to see some low pressure showing up here in the uh, western part of the Atlantic Ocean by the end of the work week. And colder air at this time, as we, uh, we recall with the 850 millibar temperature anomaly maps, really plunge into Alaska and it uh, eventually breaks off and makes a move to the south and east. And here we have a couple of tropical looking systems here on the GFS, rather weak at this particular time as we get in the latter part of the upcoming weekend. But this is something that's on the table, not only one, but perhaps even two tropical systems over the next couple of weeks in the Atlantic Basin region. We'll see what the GFS does with this particular system. The first week, uh, system tends to weaken as it pushes to the north, uh, but the second system actually strengthens on its western movement here. And again, we're in the speculation phase right here, but it's something we want to monitor over the next couple of weeks. Here we are now, uh, well into next week, into the first full uh, week, into the first few days of the month of November here. A lot of cold air at this time, building, building up across western Canada, anchored by a very strong Canadian high pressure system uh, by the time we get to about 10 days out from now. And this particular system uh, on the GFS strengthens as it moves over the Caribbean, in this particular case right across uh, Cuba here. Cold air dives in the eastern part of the nation. We'll see if something like this ends up developing with a strong last gasp type of tropical system at the same time cold air mass pushes from Canada into the eastern U.S. This is almost two weeks away right now uh, we're looking, but this is something that is on the table here. We'll have to watch this. GFS at this particular time pushes a, uh, this tropical system out across the western U.S. More cold air builds up across Canada. So we're getting again into that time of the year where we have to watch for potential last gas to the Atlantic Basin tropical season maybe with one or even two tropical systems over the next couple of weeks. And certainly as we get into November, later next week, uh, we'll see more and more chance for cold air masses to drive south and east from western Canada into the central U.S. And perhaps there could be a clash between uh, uh, tropical systems to the south and east in North America and colder air masses to the north excuse me, tropical systems to the south and east in North America uh, over the next couple of weeks with cold air masses dropping uh, from the north and west to the south and east as we go into the early part of November. So just kind of a, a video discussion here on the possibilities over the next couple of weeks as we transition from October to November. That's it for now for ArcFieldWeather.com. I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.